Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I am your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening in the city of Missoula, the state, and beyond as we go into a very rainy, rainy weekend for your Memorial Day weekend as well. So it is currently 55 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 81, but by tonight, your low is going to be 54 with heavy rains, 60% chance of rain. Doesn't mean it's going to uh, heavily rain for a long period of time, but then this... Uh, Rain's going to be down to 20% by Saturday morning to about 60%, and just basically kind of peak throughout Saturday afternoon, Saturday night. Sunday, you can have some of those rain showers, and it looks like these flood warnings are continuing now until Monday at noon. So, I'll, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I thought it was going to get a little bit better from last week because the flood warning uh, happened until Thursday, and then it's just jumping right in on it for more flood warnings happening today. So... And um, just letting you guys know that there's also going to be some road construction in the Missoula area as well. The roads that will be closed th this weekend include North Orange Street, I-90, Exit 104, where a new roundabout was completed last year. Should expect continued delays and congestion at peak traffic times. Uh, that's mainly because of an ongoing construction of the Van Buren um, Street interchange, where, uh, which is Exit 105, where two of the four lanes are closed throughout the weekend. Um, I-90 over the bridge over the block Foot River at several sections of I-90 west of town and on the Frenchtown Frontage Road, all will be s at all will all stop on noon Friday and resume Tuesday morning. Um, Knife River imposed an additional nighttime res uh, restriction in the lower Van Buren Street from 6 p.m. to 6.30 a.m. Wednesday and Thursday, redu reducing traffic flow to a single lane. Stoplights and flaggers were in place. So those are some of the street uh, closures that are happening, uh, and the rain's not going to keep them away. So watch out for some of the uh, construction and preparation for uh, the roundabout they're building on Van Buren Street. In state news, Looks like uh, some of the flood warnings have been finally moving over to the Billings area, and uh, the flood water is happening in western Mont and um, eastern Montana. Sorry about that. The Yellowstone River is slated to rise 18 inches, uh, which is above the original all-time record of 15 feet. Uh, wait, 15. Sorry, 15 inches, which was set in 1997. Forecasts now anticipate the Yellowstone River uh, reaches monitor flood stage of actually it is feet. Never mind. Um, forget what I said. So it's going to be 18 inches above the original record, which is 15 feet. And of course, uh, th they, um, the minor flood stage will be uh, by Monday. Um, okay, I have to re reset the iner inertia. <laughs> Anyways, okay, forecasters now um, anticipate the Yellowstone will reach the minor flood stage of 13.5 feet by Monday and then rise to 16.4 feet by late Tuesday or early Wednesday. Major flood stage at the river ga uh, gauge in Billings is classified at the point where it reaches 15.5 feet. Heavy rainfall co coupled, coupled with the warm weather, exceeding high elevation snowmelt in south central Montana has already prompted in minor flooding this week in several rivers and streams that flow into the Yellowstone. Of course, uh, much to no surprise, the majority of rain is expected to fall beginning Sunday and continue through Monday morning in those areas. Some of the rain that's going to be starting to fall here this week and will be heading on over to eastern Montana. But of course, one of the bigger th things news that has nothing to do with the flooding, uh, but has everything to do with uh, President Trump's abruptly calls off a meeting, um, the June 12th meeting with North Korea Kim Jong-un to discuss nuclear disarmament of uh, the uh, the leader of South Korea is trying to uh, uh, basically figure out why he did in the first place and the fallout of the uh, cancellation as the world leaders express dismay. Uh, of course, if anybody knows uh, or read The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump, he tends to play hard to get so that this tactic uh, may or may not pay off in the long run. So anyways, South Korea President Moon Jae-in uh, said that he's very perplexed by the decision, which is very called uh, very regrettable, according to South Korean news agency uh, Yonhap. It's uh, not clear whether South Korea is... Uh, a close U.S. ally uh, immediately involved in the negotiations with North Korea was informed in advance that Trump was canceling, calling off the summit. So that's kind of what's happening there. On Tuesday, Trump warned that there was a very uh, substantial chance that the meeting won't work out. North Korea has been signaling that it might call off the summit itself, objecting to military uh, exercises in South Korea and c uh, comments from American politicians. Um, 
Yep, but of course Trump's letter on Thursday, yesterday, was uh, a surprise to many. So that's kind of what's happening in the news. Um, I got a bunch of new programs going to be airing on MCAT. So here is some new MCAT programs. And when I come back, I'm going to be talk. Uh, let me make sure I'm in the right. Yep. OK, so when I come back, I'm going to talk about some city council stuff and your flagship Friday video of the week. So stay with me. So overall, we had quite a few te quite a few takeaways from this trip. But I would say these are probably our most important. I really respected the collectivist business culture in Japan. They focus on the team rather than an individual. So in the, you know, in the United States, we're often focused on the individual in business. So what can my career do for me and all of this? But in Japan, you know, it was interesting when I was talking with the people at Hitachi, most employees work at one company in their entire life. You don't find that in the United States. So I think it's important to take a look into that. You know, we always hear about these issues in business in the United States, and so maybe if we evaluate what they're doing. Want to talk to me about because in addition to um, being a part of this program, I often um, am invited to speak to different groups that visit um, in Helena and that kind of thing. So I get to talk to lots of women from other countries, um, and I think oftentimes they come to the U.S. thinking, oh my gosh, this is like the promised land and women are doing so well. Um, and what they find is that women aren't doing as well as they thought in a lot of ways, and it's really hard for all of us to wrap our brains around how that works and what that looks like. Here's one that everyone needs to hear because even people like you that were nice most of the time can still be mean for no good reason at all. Jeff, you were pretty well liked, fairly popular, though not the king of the hill, but you certainly did have days when you would pick on other people because you, just like everyone else in middle school, had your fair share of insecurities. Remember when you picked on Eric Thornton in eighth grade science class? Remember when he would fall asleep on his desk and you would play tricks on him just to get attention from other people or just because you thought it was funny? Remember that? That was mean. Remember how you used to talk behind his back sometimes and you and your friends would say how he didn't change his clothes often enough, often enough or how he always wore the same pair of jeans and the same white t-shirt to school nearly every day? Remember that? And remember when you finally grew up and figured out that you had no reason in the whole wide world to be mean to him at all and felt awful for the way you treated him and realized that it was time to reach out and apologize? And remember when he came to the 20-year class reunion and he remembered all of those things because he has your same memory? All the things that you had done to him and he didn't hold them against you even though he most certainly could have? And then remember when you asked him about why he always fell asleep in eighth grade science class and he said flatly, well, my dad sometimes had to work night shift at the police department, and my mom was epileptic. My two older brothers were gone. One was in prison. The other one was just gone. My dad would ask me to stay up at night with her because if she had a seizure in the middle of the night, she honestly could have died. And then what would I do without a mother? Past, what we have done is that when you travel internationally, you can take one 50-pound bag of your purse, two 50-pound bags. And so we've always said to our team, you can have one bag for yourself, for your personal belongings, and one will be medical supplies. But they have a new president in Tanzania, and things have gotten tougher. And this last year when we got there, I was the one who draw the lucky straw, I guess. But myself and um, Bishop Aludi were taken out into the parking lot, and they went through every one of our bags. I had to open them, zip them, try to explain what they were, and they confiscated more than half of our bags. We had no, we didn't even have a toothbrush left. I mean, we take over hundreds of, and hundreds of toothbrushes and toothpaste and, and dressings and medication. You know, um, we have some pharmacies that just donate large amounts of medication for us. They confiscated it all. And um, after a lot of bargaining back and forth, um, it was probably the hardest four hours of my life. I, but I was being so strong, and I was like, I am not going to let them see me cry. I am not going to cry. And I'd pull something out, and, he, and he'd say, well, what's that for? And I'd try to explain. He'd go, no. And he'd throw it over there. And, and um, they just, I mean, these were guys with guns on. You're just standing there like, what am I supposed to My hands were shaking. And, um, but that's happening more and more. What happened then was that Bishop Aludi did a lot of bargaining. We paid him 500 American dollars, and we were able to get our supplies back. 
Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some city council. Uh, but of course, if you want to find out more information about those programs and more, you can log on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resources for everything Missoula related. MCAT goes out and shoots a lot of community events and lecture series here in the city of Missoula. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. If you have a, a program that you want MCAT to film for you, or if you want to get the training and tools that you need to film it yourself, you can come to MCAT every Wednesday at 5.30 p.m. But of course, go to How Do I? request event recording and it will send you uh, all the right steps you need to take to uh, submit us uh, to go and film your event that's coming up as well but let's talk about some city council uh, city council if you are interested in finding out more on your own I'm just gonna repeat this later at the end of my segment is go to ci.missoula.mt.us it's a Wonderful resources to find out about everything that you need to know what's happening within the city um, and finding out all the details, how much money is being spent on certain items and how much things are going to be approved and also giving pub and listening to some of the public comment about some of the people just to kind of get a gauge on certain feelings about certain um, amendments and motions that are being passed to the city. So let's talk about Committee of the Whole. The Missoula Economic Partnership gave a presentation on Wednesday. Many companies uh, were met to talk, uh, were, uh, met to talk about the standard income of their businesses and the needs for jobs. Like 70% of all businesses in Missoula are hiring in quantities. So here's Jenny Graff, she's with MEP. Uh, she talks about the 2017-2018 retention program and talks about who is the ones that are creating the jobs. So when you look at this, um, keep in mind that we actually only met with a couple of wholesale and retail companies. So I really like to look at kind of that middle third because we did meet with a few more companies in those sectors. So looking at creative industries and how many employees they had three years ago versus the point in time in which they were surveyed. You know, creative industries, so that's like media, marketing, um, videography, film production, etc. They're reporting a 154% increase in their number of employees. Um, same information technology, they are reporting a 63% increase. Um, entertainment, recreation, 50%. And then manufacturing, some of you might remember that Montana is reporting, we are the number one state in the nation for manufacturing growth and we're seeing that paralleled here in our uh, local economy all right so uh, just a little side note that uh, one of the businesses in the Missoula County area that are part of the manufacturing is Alcon it's a group based out of Bonner Milltown community um, uh, Bonner Milltown um, city which uh, has seen success in manufacturing trailers for rafting and horses so if you have a raft that needs a trailer they're usually the place to make those custom uh, trailers hitches for people um, uh, Missoula's issue seems to be finding skilled labor for these kinds of jobs. Sure, uh, Alcon is one of those jobs that actually offers training within their environment, but a lot of times specialized work is missing in those things. So uh, commercial real estate is not a problem, when, which seems to be when people move to live here, but not move to work here. So 65% give, 65% uh, of, uh, in terms of business, give Missoula an A or B um, with the lowest uh, um, grade, which is has to do with gas prices for businesses. The main point of these updates are to show that Missoula how to grow and invest in the private sector in regards to zoning and rezoning efforts to invite businesses to open up shop in Missoula. So a lot of this is an update to talk to the city of Missoula about where they can invest and all this stuff like that. And uh, here's Jenny. She talks about Missoula growth. Um, we are seeing a pretty significant uptick in businesses that are interested in relocating or expanding into Missoula. So the bars on this graph represent the number of entities that I'm working with in each sector, and then the line is the number of total jobs that they would bring. So um, I'm working with six technology companies, six manufacturers, three professional service firms, and two life sciences company companies and on the aggregate if we were to have you know 100 percent close rate <laughs> uh, we would be looking at about 900 jobs wow 900 jobs and those are the kind of jobs that they need for a lot of those specific uh 
areas of work. Um, of course, Missoula is a college town, and with many people coming and going, jobs are short-lived for a lot of students who wish to continue from the University of Montana. Many of the businesses are hiring locally, first and foremost, but if they are unsuccessful, they will try to bring in some from the outside. Skilled labor tends to be brought f in from the outside to towns like Missoula. Um, of course, Stacy Anderson, uh, city council member, talks about the wage gap, and uh, Jenny Graff answers. So this all sounds like great news, but what I'm hoping, and I might be stealing your thunder and you're going to get to that, is the wages that these jobs are paying. Because I think it's a lot different when Lucky's comes in and adds, which is great, I love it, not to talk disparaging, but those types of jobs versus like ATG is going to double on the top, over the course of the next couple of years. There's a huge disparity in the wages that those jobs pay and the economic impact that then it has to Missoula. Right. So all of the jobs that I'm referring to uh, in kind of the, the area that we work in are high wage, high growth sectors. So, uh, you know, we're really tracking the jobs that are over that median county wage. So, so and of course, the um, medium county wage that they're referring to is an eighteen, nineteen dollar median. So basically, it's um, the whole idea behind this is that they want to. Um, let's see. Let me just kind of. Skip through that part. Okay, so of course they want to bring information that involves numbers in the hourly wage within an average on how will growth and invited business in the Missoula County. The medium, um, of course, is the uh, $18.99, um, $19 starting wage for a lot of these uh, businesses that are moving here through different things. So, which is a lot of good news for a lot of people who want to get a good high-paying job in the city of Missoula to get uh, $38. $40,000 a year job to help with uh, just kind of like the cost of living that's uh, associated with living in Missoula. Um, Nicole Rush, uh, she's a grants manager. Um, ooh, sorry, I must del accidentally deleted that one clip. So Nicole Rush, uh, she's a grants manager for Missoula Economic Partnership, and she does want to talk about uh, giving money to local startups and create jobs and benefit the community. And um, let me just kind of skip over here. Uh, Yeah, it's going to take me a little bit just to find it again. Okay, here it is. So here is um, Miss Rush with uh, some of the uh, money that they give to uh, startups. The type of business that exports a product or service outside the state, so they're, the idea is they're bringing in new dollars into the economy, and they have to be creating jobs that pay uh, a significant wage, which currently is eighteen ninety nine an hour or above. So that's that's where we get that eighteen ninety nine. Uh, an hour number from it's set by the state for our county um, so in the grand center management right now the projection is that they will create 252 new jobs so that's what they project currently uh, as of today they uh, 158 of those jobs have been created so we may not reach the, you know employers apply for the grant they say you know I'm gonna create 40 jobs or 80 jobs and we and they get awarded for that and then they actually have to demonstrate that they hire the people they're paying the wage um, there, are, there are some other requirements to receive reimbursement as with all grant programs so and this is uh, this spe specific grant that they're talking about is one of those grants that helps create the uh, infrastructure to help build these um, startups and these businesses and to expand the businesses and they're usually only a awarded once it's a one-time deal so for a lot of uh, businesses to expand and grow um, Missoula Economic Partnership um, has unfortunately not been able to uh, um, the, um, so they, they mentioned that they uh, that this year that the Missoula Economic Partnership is going to have less money than they did the year before, but the, the amount of money that they're giving out now is over a million dollars to businesses to help grow and help bring uh, – I mean, their goal is 258. Jo I mean, 252 jobs, and currently they're about well over half the amount of jobs that they're trying to uh, go for. But of course, 2018 is only halfway through, so this is by the end of 2018. So, uh, the, of course, this meeting talked about the workforce training and apprenticeships, and overall benefiting the Missoula County area in terms of the export sense and bringing um, outside money into the city of Missoula, um, while at the same time using local employment opportunities to help uh, with jobs with uh, getting a uh, $18, $19 average median. Um, 
And that basically concludes everything that you need to know about what's happening there. If you're interested, you can go to Committee of the Whole, and this is an update, so they, there's no motion to be passed, but I think that's really cool just to learn about the uh, economics and what the Missoula Economic Partnership is doing to help benefit the Missoula County and giving grants and, and find out ways how Missoula can improve their zoning and rezoning to invite businesses to the city of Missoula. Um, on a, like a technical manufacturing sense, not necessarily more, <laughs> more breweries. So anyways, uh, <laughs> that's a slight jab at Missoula. But anyways, uh, the uh, MPO uh, has collected extensive existing condition data and has developed a series of options to determine priorities areas for pedestrian infrastructures. Uh, the pedestrian um, the presentation included an over overview of work done to date, including feedback received from the public and steering committees, reviews of priorities, area options, crossing infrastructures, priorities, public works. This is a public works meeting, and they're talking about sidewalks and where they need sidewalks and how much sidewalks are going to uh, are going to are going to are going to cost cost. Uh, Aaron Wilson, Transportation Division through the City of Missoula, talks about the needs for the new sidewalks. Different tables prioritize different sidewalks. So on this map here, you can see the thickness or the, the weight of this line um, represents um, the number of tables that prioritize that particular um, street or facility for new sidewalks. So you can see there are some neighborhoods. Some of this is related to who was at. There was definitely a, a group of folks from the River Road neighborhood who were there and very interested in sidewalks in their neighborhood. But even in that context, we can see where um, they think the need is in their neighborhood for, for sidewalks. So you know, for example, this is River Road. This is Curtis. Uh, in Franklin to the floor, we have Eaton Street. Um, I believe this is Johnson. Um, and then a fair number of sidewalks in the west side and north side. I believe this is Turner here in the north side. All right. So uh, basically, um, they were talking about some of the roads and some of the needs, and he was just mentioning a couple roads that are necessary. Uh, of course, uh, Aaron talks about the people who have um, overlapped to another person's pedestrian infrastructure. Um, he mentions that this is a uh, uh, an issue and also um, kind of like an ongoing thing that's going to basically be going on forever because as soon as a lot of sidewalks are built, a lot of them have to be uh, maintained and updated because a lot of overuse and whatnot of that as well. Uh, it costs about $70 per square foot for a new sidewalk. And for uh, many of you new who are wondering how much would it cost if the city decided to basically replace and repair all the sidewalks, here is Aaron Wilson with kind of like the, uh, the needs, just the new sidewalk costs. So we looked at where we have missing sidewalks and using just that $70 a linear foot for um, either a seven foot curbside sidewalk or a five foot boulevard sidewalk. The costs seem to be pretty consistent between those two. Um, the need in the city, if we were to do sidewalks on both sides of every street that's missing sidewalks today, is about $84 million. When you compare that to what we're um, spending every year, that's 80 to 100 years worth of projects just to fill in the missing sidewalk network. We also looked at condition. So there's, you know, we have varying condition of si existing sidewalks. So if you think about going, investing all of our money in building new sidewalks, today some of that money we're spending is replacing and repairing existing sidewalks. All of this that's in reasonably good shape is going to start deteriorating and is going to go into the poor and failing. So there's an Okay, so they don't have a, a direct estimate number on how much it would cost to re replace all the sidewalks in the city of Missoula, but that kind of gives you an estimate about $84 million to put in new sidewalks uh, for the missing areas that need sidewalks. So a lot of this um, meeting was talking about um, getting feedback from people in the in, in areas of the Missoula County and Missoula th in, in the city to talk about which uh, areas need more sidewalks and which would be good for um, promoting um, travel and connectivity because that was the biggest thing is about how the city wants to connect trails to sidewalks and this and that and just kind of figure out where the needs are and just th so because this is going to be sidewalks that are not associated with TIF funds they're going to be associated with the the general uh, loan and uh, construction projects um, that they want to use the month that they already have for to build these sidewalks and whatnot all right, so in conclusion, the city looks to figure out which sidewalks would be by na uh, beneficial that won't cost poor neighborhoods TIF funds that, will, uh, that would 
plague um, homeowners in those areas for years to come. Rattlesnake Dam Removal Project has been in the talks for almost six months now. The water intake dam has not been in use since 1982 and structurally underdeveloped for any restoration projects. The city obtained the property along with the mountain water and has determined that this area is going to be used as a park uh, site to be managed by Missoula Parks and Rec. Rob Roberts uh, with Trotton Unlimited uh, talks about the uh, river restoration project and here, um, and this is what he had to say. There is a infrastructural removal component, component of this project, which is the dam removal, the spillway removal, and the, you know, the removal of buildings and other um, man-made infrastructure on site, which is the primary purpose of this project. We've broken out the stream restoration into our Reach A and Reach B, Reach A being upstream of the dam to the Forest Service boundary, Reach B being from the dam downstream, essentially to Northwestern Energy property. And the reason we've done that is because looking at the potential costs of implementation as well as permitting considerations and timelines, it makes a lot of sense to potentially see this as a phased project where the project is not all completed in one field season or one year, but potentially phased over multiple years as as funding and, and other conditions allow. So, All right, so as you can see that um, in this map, it kind of shows you the river and where the dam is. This is not a really good um, um, justification for a close-up because you won't be able to read it, but for the most part, the, what they're trying to do is, uh, I think the biggest part is like the first part they want to try to do is get rid of the, uh, the concrete part. Um, and try to get rid of the uh, the basically the dam part, and then with the restoration after the fact, um, the dam has been there for over 70 years in some form, and has basically become a part of the ecosystem. Many of the uh, motives behind this is to ensure the area can go back to its natural state in a smooth, low impact way, which is why they want to do this in phases over the years. Uh, Rob gives an outline of this project about what where they are right now and where they're going to go. Uh, you know, we have completed our conceptual design and public scoping. We're now basically in the spring, summer of 2018 uh, at preliminary design. And essentially what we plan to do this summer is collect some additional data that wasn't um, collected last year to make sure we have all the pieces necessary on uh, vegetation, soils, stream habitat, um, and some of our hydro hydrologic modeling for the project. We'll work through design um, based on that preferred alternative through the summer and fall. All right, so of course, um, I'm just going to cut them off there. From, right, from what you can see right here, uh, the final design and uh, bid documents are going to be in spring 2019. So about a year from now, they're going to be talking about um, what uh, the phases they're going to be doing. And then, of course, site preparation phase one will start in the summer of 2019. So we can expect this project to be done in a year, but this is something that they're going to be working on further um, and for foremost. Um, but of course, this whole meeting was about just kind of giving ideas and throwing about around uh, different uh, concepts about how they would remove the dam, different phases, different areas, and then, you know, just trying to be trying to um, tell people exactly what's going on with the dam situation. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, you can go to Public Works on the city website at ci.missoula.mt.us. Um, this concludes all my city council meeting, but you could always look up all these meetings and upcoming meetings by going to your government agendas, webcast minutes. It brings you to this nice, wonderful, uh, quick link to all the sites, and it gives you all these things, and it gives you nice little hyperlinks to all the meetings that are coming up in May. So, of course, uh, City Council looks like it's the fifth Monday of the month, so they will not have a City Council meeting next Monday. But you can always enjoy some of the Public Works, Parks, and Conservation Community of the Whole next Wednesday, and I'll be able to give you that report um, next Friday, along with uh, your uh, art guide for First Friday. Okay, so that basically... Uh, all I need to say about what's happening with City Council, I got a brand new uh, Flagship Friday video of the week for you guys. So uh, without further ado, here is the Flagship Friday video of the week from Helga High School. Well, I think it's... No, that's not how it works. we at least get like a majority vote or something like that to make it fair and sort of democratic? Well, you know, that's a pretty good... <laughs> well, you know, really bad idea. Really, really bad idea. Anyway, speaking of baseball... <laughs> Oof. 
Fun fact, I learned how baseball works. And that's what the cricket players would say, rugby. What was I doing again? All right, killing all of you, except for Colin. Starting with you. Press continue. Close enough. And as for you, you die. <laughs> you missed, like, every shot. Did I? Or did your body just miss the bullets? But I'm still alive. That's problematic. But can you survive? I just gave you cancer all over your body. Get out of here. Now that that's all taken care of, there's only one matter of business to take care of. So go. Hey, go. You want to hear something funny? You're fired. <laughs> Is that, is that my brother? Huh. He's dead. Oh well, I never really liked him that much. Remember, hey Colin, remember when I told you uh, that you were like a brother to me? Well, it turns out I actually did have a brother, it's just I really didn't like him. So anyways, you wanna go get some pizza with me? And you can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it. Alright, that, that's all my dudes. Have a nice trip. See you next fall. <laughs> Okay, let's talk about some events that are happening in the city of Missoula, starting with all your indoor acrobatic fun for your kids. If you have a kid who is birth to five years of age, Mismo, uh, Missoula, Mismo uh, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena and Roots Acro Sports Center is the place to be, starting as early as 9 a.m. and going well until the early afternoon. So if you're interested in doing that with your kids, it's a great way to get them um, moving and in a safe, large, uh, foam pitted environment. So enjoy that. Uh, Tiny Tales and Storytime in Missoula Public Library. Hey, if you don't want your kids to f jump around, do some flips, fall down, uh, this will be a great place to have them um, work out their brain muscles in Miz Missoula Public Library. Uh, well, they just need an adult lap to sit on or well, they learn nine new words a day. So this is from birth to five years of age. Uh, Spectrum um, is they're talking about uh, cartol uh, cartography, and that's going to be happening in the makerspace, uh, and a bunch of other activities are happening there from 11 a.m. to about 5 p.m. during their open hours there as well. And of course, if you're interested in doing some art stuff back at the Missouri Art Museum from 12 to 1 p.m., they have watercolor classes and yarn classes, so you can stitch and sew your own clothing and scarves and gifts. Um, Cribbage and Bridge at Missoula Senior Center, um, if you are a card player, 
and you want to play with other people, Missouri Senior Center is the place to be. I believe the price is about 225 to play, and that usually the money goes to do our considered donations to the Missoula Senior Center to keep their space open for people to go to the best dance floor in the Missoula County area. Uh, 3.30 uh, this afternoon, YMCA hosts Family Fun Time at the Y. They usually do this in the morning, but on Fridays they do it in the afternoon from 3.30 and on. Um, and you can check that out. And it's about $20 uh, per family, and you get to enjoy some um, basketball court, swimming pool, climbing walls, workout areas, and there's all sorts of fun things on their nice little property just off of Russell Street. Little Peaches Girls Softball Clinic at McCormick Park, the Rock Peaches adult women's softball team will be hosting the first annual Little Peaches softball clinic. All ages welcome. Please join them for an evening of softball instruction, drills, and games. You can register online or um, you can go on down there and register the day of and they accept of all ages, but they are targeting a kid, uh, girls 4 to 12 years of age. Clinic will be designed to help skill levels of uh, registrants. Uh, beginners are welcome. Being uh, comfortable exercise clothing um, Bring comfortable clothing, exercise clothing, uh, be flexible. Uh, clinic will teach throwing, catching, uh, batting, base, running, infield, outfield, strength, and agility. The clinic and all players will be covered under the clinic insurance policy in case of any accidents. So you can contact them at rockfordpeachesmissoula at gmail.com or you can give them a call at 845-596-4576. Wow. I'll just say that number again. I don't know if you're actually going to use it, but it's 845-596-4576 with any questions. Hey, can you remember nine numbers? Maybe. Uh, and, of course, Top Hat has their Family Friendly Friday from 6 to 9 p.m. every Friday, and it invites kids to join their parents during happy hour specials. Parents get a drink while the kids get to run around, and don't touch those in instruments of the, the performers, which include the Hawthorne Roots, which will be in playing at the Top Hat tonight at 10.15, and that's usually when they kick all the people out who are under the age of 21. Uh, the Shiver is going to be at the Union Club. Um, Under the Skin is going to be a film at the Roxy, and of course they're going to have a $300 poker night at the poker room in the Hilton Hotel. And looks like there's a bunch of other things happening there, but there's a Lolo Community Center benefit concert at Lolo Community Center starting at 7 p.m. tonight as well. I have an art clip for you guys because this is the very last time I'll be able to play this art clip from the um, Clay Studio of Missoula. So when I come back, I'll talk about all, all your uh, Memorial Day weekend events. There's really not much uh, posted on MissoulaEvents.net, but I'll talk about some of the Saturday things happening tomorrow. So stay with me. We're almost done. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some Saturday events that are happening this Saturday. Farmer's Market, all happening tomorrow from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. There's also the 42nd Annual Memorial Day Flea Market at uh, Community Park in St. Regis, Montana. Uh, they posted on the MissoulaEvents.net calendar, and I think this is pretty cool because it's going to be happening on Saturday and Sunday pretty much all morning long, and it's going to be a nice little flea market. But, of course, Farmer's Market, uh, the uh, People's Market, and the Clark Fork River Market are, are all happening in the downtown Missoula area from 8 to 1 p.m. Um, 
the Parcel Ranch Community Days. Uh, Parcel um, is a ranch here in the, around the city of Missoula, and uh, this Saturday and Sunday, they're um, asking the Hellgate hunters and anglers in helping the uh, Parcel Ranch recover from the Lowell Peak Fire. Um, so basically, come get your hands dirty and restore the wildlife habitat. Enjoy a great lunch from the notorious PIG and uh, beer donations by Lolo Peak Brewing Company. They'll be working outside and consists of snacking small uh, diameter burnt uh, timber. Uh, of course, please wear appropriate clothing and closed-toed shoes. Overnight camping is available, but you RSV by calling them at alec at mtwf.org. So that's Montana, um, I guess... W um, wilderness Forest. I don't know. Anyways, you can call them at 303-0494. Uh, Again, that number is 303-0494. And mostly this is to RSVP if, you, RSVP if you're going to stay the night. But of course, the Parcel Ranch is looking for any community members who wants to go on down there and help out with cleaning up some of the uh, areas as well. So this is from the Lolo Peak Fire. So you'll probably be going to Lolo. Uh, f uh, food Cycles launching event at Free Cycles Montana, and this is happening from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. all day Saturday. C uh, join the fun of launching a food forest in a Missoula's own Free Cycles. There's a several local groups working the f uh, Free Cycles to help them accomplish their vision of the uh, the property there by integrating a community food forest in the bicycle landscape. The term the uh, the team is waiting on soil reports expected later this summer before planting a large fruit and nut trees, and there are beginning the process of building and uh, abused building up the abused soil and putting in similar uh, um, perennials and annuals um, that won't mind being disturbed if necessary so this is also an opportunity to, uh, to uh, clue the um, community about the plans and vision of the food forest and how they can help and benefit wow that was a struggle I struggled through that I have no idea where they're going with it, but um, they want to plant a bunch of trees in the area, and I think that's really cool. Uh, paper wasp nest art at the Missoula Insectarium start at noon tomorrow. They'll be creating a beautiful work of art inspired by the talented nest builders, the paper wasp. I talked about this, uh, I think, on Wednesday. They're doing this again. Um, predator feeding at 1 p.m., so see which hungry uh, um, invertebrate is hungry that day. So... Just want to give you an announcement. It's sad, but um, last Saturday was our last Saturday drop in here at MCAT. So uh, MCAT will be in uh, MISCON at uh, Holiday Inn. So it basically starts today at noon, um, and it's going to go on pretty much all day today. I'll have a little bit of information about uh, MISCON as well, but I just want you guys to know that MCAT is not doing Saturday drop-ins anymore. But if you're interested in learning about our summer camps, um, summer camps are kicking off this summer starting as early. The first, I mean, the, it's the last full week in June, which is, I believe, it's June 25th, is Animation Camp 1. And then subsequently, right after the uh, 4th of July week, uh, all weeks in July are devoted to Animation Camp 2, um, Time Travelers Camp, and then finally, we also have Zombie Camp. You can register online at MCAT.org. Okay, now back to events. Uh, the uh, Hellgate Roller Derby is coming back with their first bout uh, at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Um, Hellgate Roller Derby will face off visiting teams four times at Missoula F County Fairgrounds. Uh, BOTUS takes place in the outdoor 4-H pavilion at the fairgrounds. There's an admission fee. Um, food and drinks are available for purchase. It is Memorial Day weekend, so you can enjoy the extra day to uh, remember those who gave their lives to the country in the line of duty or anyone who has served their community and their country. Uh, this is all you... This is all that you need to know what's happening this weekend as well. But of course, here's some of your late night Saturday events that are happening. You got um, live music at a uh, rumor restaurant happening. Uh, wait, wait, this is Sunday. Let me just scroll on up. So if you look at MissoulaEvents.net, this is where you can find the information. Uh, it looks like uh, the Shiver is the Union Club and the Hoth. Oh, wait, 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 no. I'm, I, well, it looks like Saturday is like really shrunken down. There we go. You got Absolutely with Chris Smith of the Badlander. Left on 10th at Monks. Russ Nasset and the Revelation, uh, Revelators at the Union Club. And the Model Rockets are going to be the Top Hat Lounge this weekend. So if you plan on going out and about after you go to MissCon, you can enjoy that and more. So, of course, uh, MissCon is Missoula Construction, I believe. Uh, Missoula Comic Con. No, no, it's basically MissCon. 
I always forget what is, uh, MissCon actually stands for. So MissCon is a four-day celebration of fantasy, science fiction, and horror that takes over at the Holiday Inn Missoula downtown every Memorial weekend. This is the 32nd annual one. Through uh, discussion panels, hangout games, and uh, readings, uh, crafting demos, and workshops, they bring fans together with authors, artists, game designers, actors, con uh, cus um consumers and other professions in the world of uh, spectacular fiction view and buy art from our art show and you can watch f uh, our film festival submission participants in the costume pageant play rpgs board games and magic the gathering and you can check out the merchants row wh whether you're, you're interested in miscon has something uh, to fascinate educate and entertain you so basically you can check that out uh, go to um MissCon.org, M-I-S-C-O-N.org, and you can find out who's going to be there, the event schedule, and more, all happening starting today as early as noon and going well until Monday around 5, 6 p.m. So those are some of the things you guys can enjoy this weekend as well. Um, thanks for joining me. It's been a interesting week. I'll be back next week for the last week before I go on my vacation, so I'll talk more about what's happening in the city of Missoula, beyond, and more, and flagship friday so thanks for joining me and for wake up missoula i'm scott ramp <laughs>